Well, this is Amity. Thank you for coming to our Design 101. Tonight we're going to be talking about multi-generational living. These are very unique times that we're living through and we are responding as, as a design firm to the requests that are coming in and we're having a lot of people moving in the multi-generational living direction. Um, it's got the benefit of uh, everyone combining their incomes together and in that way getting a much better design, um, much better property, a much better living experience, a much better sight oftentimes. So we are getting a lot of people reaching out to us for that at this very strange time in history. We always start out our Design 101s by quoting the America's First, at least, uh, interior designer, Elsie DeWolf. Her, my favorite quote from her, I am going to make everything around me beautiful. That will be my life. I agree with you, Elsie. So there are, first of all, a lot of benefits to multi-generational living. They are not just the benefit that of the economics of it, um, there are a lot of studies that show that multi-generational living provides a much healthier mental health uh, environment for all of the family, kids especially. Um, you know, there used to be, in the old days, before the Industrial Revolution, families all lived together, and then they broke up, and they families went out, and, and young people went out to make their living, and it, it, the fabric of that kind of structure fell apart. But at this time, a lot of people are really bringing that uh, back to life. So it tends to be a trend. And not just because they want to uh, be together, um, also for economic reasons. Uh, kids are sometimes staying home longer. People are living longer. Um, and families, if they pool their resources, can oftentimes buy a much better property uh, or renovate a really great property to a level that makes it more comfortable for everyone involved than they could do on their own. So yeah, definitely a trend, um, definitely something that I see as a very positive thing um, coming out of this very strange time that we're in. I think people are resetting their priorities at this time and being together with family is definitely one of them. So there are a lot of ways to solve this ways to design for that kind of living. And one of them is uh, the correct kind of floor plan. So you can see in this floor plan, there's a kitchen, a great room, a patio, all the sort of parts of a property that you would need for a regular sort of standard four person family home. But this has got an additional kitchenette and living, additional garage for separate entry exit. Um, and I, I think that's a really important thing to take into account when you're designing for families is the togetherness, yes, but also the separation and the sense of private space, separate comings and goings, um, that sort of thing. It's important to kind of think those things through. This is a local property actually that did that very well in a, in a kind of horizontal way. They designed um, a house on the right here that is for the um, husband, wife, two kids sort of thing. And then the mother-in-law, in the building that's connected through a beautiful glass hallway and the front door is on the other side of that. So a beautiful sort of connection from the younger family to the older relative. The kids can run back and forth, run over to grandma and get a bedtime story, run back across the hall and get tucked in at night. So a really beautiful way to um, connect those two properties at giving each family member separate independent living but also combined living oh this really great property i found images of and i think it's in australia they did the same solution but they did it in a in a in a vertical way um, this beautiful yellow sort of sunny yellow staircase connects three generations living all in this sort of same tower block with a little bit of outdoor space um, imagining to me that the elders live on the bottom floors for easy access and then I can imagine the kids being able to run up the stairs to um, their, their aunties or grandma etc um, maybe everybody gathers at the top for media probably there's an elevator I would think but I think that's a really great um, example of kind of dense interior living a little bit of outdoor space and a way to, be, to stay connected uh, separate but together so this is a unique project um, that I, I've shown a few times before, but it it's really was a, ahead of its time as far as 
this multi-generational trend. A client came to us and wanted a beautiful contemporary home, not too big, um, tall ceilings on this wonderful lot um, uh, and a, a little motor court that they had purchased. And they turned the little outbuildings into space for elderly relatives, a workspace, a wonderful space to spend time um, together with family, yet separate with separate entrances and exits and parking, et cetera. Um, I think it's a really great thing to also, in your design, provide a space like this, a great room where everyone can gather together. Um, but also, you want to make sure that there's a space to get away. Behind this wall here is a lovely little staircase that takes you up to a loft space with a lot of, of natural light that's separate yet still connected to the house. So there's a napping space, a workspace, kind of a breakout space. Um, this is another one of the cottages. Um, very unique little property where we were able to fit out the interior in such a way that it could house visiting guests where they could come and stay and be with the family but not be in the same air-conditioned space, which all of us are thinking about, I think, right now. So what a wonderful thing to have and very streamlined and sleek and simple, um, very much ready to receive whatever guests come. So that's, that's one interesting way to fit out an additional space is kind of keep it flexible malleable. Um, this, this family had a rental property that um, was for income, but then when things were getting a little strange and, and um, they wanted more connection to family and a place for people to stay, they turned it into a, a guest house, a separate guest house away from where they live. Um, but because they don't live there full time, we were able to go really crazy with it and do beautiful faux wall walls create kind of a little um, Alps, little uh, retreat in the Alps. We imagine this is where Heidi would climb with her books to read. Did some built-in beds, a lot of beautiful gingham. Feels like a wintry space, which feels like an escape from Austin too, since we don't get much winter here. And then again, as I mentioned, one of the important things when you're designing for a lot of people is to create breakout spaces for different activities. So this is an outbuilding on that same property um, for movie watching, um, kids to hang out, watch watch things, a place to go read, just separate from uh, the rest of the family. And importantly, that versatility of having an outdoor space. I know many people right now are wishing they had a screen porch or are coming to us to add screen porches. Um, I think if everyone just sort of took the time to look at their space and think about it, um, how it might work for them better, this, this could be a long haul. Um, and being able to be together but be separate, I think, is really a healthy way of handling all the things that we're going through as a society right now. So we'd be happy to help if you have any questions. If you have some structures on your property you want to uh, make some changes to, um, garage renovations are something people have been looking into, screen porches, ADUs, etc. Uh, please give us a call. We'd be happy to help. Um, thank you for joining, and we look forward to seeing you at our next Design 101 at home. Thank you.